While the glue was drying on my wing fuselage fillets, I thought I'd start taking a look at the strut bracing wires in the back. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this build, I said I would not have functional bracing wires. The instructions do call for it, but I did change the construction of the fin and the horizontal stab to be sheeted, giving it more strength where I don't think I need to have functional bracing wires. But I do want to have bracing wires at least look the part. Uh, very, pretty, pretty obvious on the real airplane because there's two of them that come from the fin down the horizontal stab, top and bottom. So it's fairly obvious. Now because these are in the very back of the airplane and because they're non-functional, I wanted to go as light as possible. So I'm starting out with 1.5 millimeter carbon fiber tube and it's going to be my wire. I noticed on, uh, these are home built, and on some of the home built it looks like cable, on others it looks like an airfoil type wire. I'm just going to go with this and try to paint it a steel color and go with that. Now 1.5, I mean the carbon fiber is 1.5 millimeter, but I'm also going to be using aluminum tube. This is going to become my attachment fairing or fitting. The reason I'm using 1 16th is because the inner diameter is a perfect fit for, if I get the correct size, but is a perfect fit for this carbon fiber. Very, not too snug, not too loose. So when it comes time to glue this in, I can just wick some thin CA into this joint and this should make it plenty strong and not have any unsightly glue sticking out. I think that'll work really well. Uh, okay, so to make the fitting attachments, I started by cutting the aluminum tube the first time I did it at three quarters of an inch. But I think that ended up being a little bit too long. So for the rest, this is the first one I've done. For the rest of them, I'm going to make them 5 eighths of an inch. And then I used a pair of smooth jawed pliers to flatten one end of it. Now I'm going to end up, when I make it 5 eighths inch long, I'm going to end up flattening just 3 sixteenths of an inch. I think that'll look really good. And then for my hardware, I'm using a 1.6 millimeter bolt uh, and nuts. So I drilled, a, after I flattened it, I drilled a 1.6 millimeter hole, stuck the bolt through, stuck, one, stuck two nuts on. My, the uh, hardware originally is about 10 to 12 millimeters long, so I needed to cut it down. I also need to have it short enough to where I can access the nut when it's because it's going to be up underneath the mounting plate. So I put a second nut on, two nuts. And then I went, uh, took my high speed uh, rotary drill, Proxon, uh, Dremel, what have you, and I used the grinding wheel to grind off the remaining of the, uh, the bolt sticking out past that second nut. Then that second nut, I basically used it to kind of re-thread the threads on the bolt uh, in case they got a little bit mangled from using the uh, high speed uh, cutting tool. So I just kind of went back and forth with that nut until I finally got the nut off. So that's what it leaves me with, the right size bolt with a single nut. Now, one thing I will say about this aluminum attachment fitting, I tried this once on a glow engine. As a matter of fact, it was my J3 Cub, and it, it's not suitable for using glow engines or gas engines. There's just too much vibration. And I found that these aluminum fittings would break right at the crease line. I guess that's the, the weak part. Now this is an electric powered motor, and so I think this is gonna be okay with electric power, less vibration. But, you know, in the event that these things do break, I'll revert back to brass, make these out of brass, a little bit heavier, but I think that'll that'll work. All right, so 
that made it the attachment fitting. Oh, one other thing. On the real airplanes, uh, these attachment fittings, they really kind of go, there's kind of a, a slot in the middle, and that slot kind of goes over the metal attachment point. And I thought about cutting a slot in this tube, but I thought that was asking too much of this small aluminum tube to make a slot go over the the uh, metal bracket and then you know try to flatten it out so I just flattened out one end of it and I mean it looks pretty close you know this is not going to scale masters or anything like that all right so for the mounting plate I'm using some 20 thousandths of an inch aluminum and this aluminum is fairly soft and bends easily but I think for this purpose it's going to be okay uh, again looking at photos on the internet about the best guess that I can make that the mounting bracket was about an inch wide as far as I could tell so this is a one-third scale model you take an inch you divide it by three or in millimeters and you come up to about eight millimeters 25 millimeters is one inch divide that by three you get about eight millimeters so i took eight millimeters and this is basically an eight millimeter oval cut that out and just drilled a hole and i have an initial bend in the metal and i will have to fine tune that when I get the other side built up, then I get my carbon fiber tube running across. But, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, it's not Scale Masters quality, but I think it'll work. I don't have a brake, a bending brake, so I have to do the best I can. I have my 16 you know, mounting brackets to go with my mounting lugs. It took about two hours to do all these. Yes, it's a lot of hand work. Some would argue that this should have been 3D printed. And, you know, I, I agree. It probably could have been, should have been. I can't really can't argue the fact. But I don't want to take the time to learn the computer work for 3D printing. I'd rather sit in the shop with some hand tools and some music in the background and just work with my hands to make these pieces. They're not all perfect, I know. I'll put the good ones on the top of the airplane and the less than good ones on the bottom. Anyway, I think I believe the next part is to start putting them on the airplane. So I've begun putting all the little bits and pieces together on the model. I have three of them sort of in place. Nothing's really permanent yet. Um, it's quite fiddly. Uh, at first my idea was to put the carbon fiber in the lug and then attach the lug to the airframe with this 1.6 millimeter bolt into a nut, but I found that nut was too hard to screw on, so I ended up having to Take this off and put the rod and the lug together, screw on the nut, and then put the whole unit into the flight control or into the stab and the fin. You notice these little 
tabs right here, the real aircraft has a strap hinge. So the, I'm using Robart hinge points, but the, the strap hinge would come here on into the elevator and go down into the elevator. Um, I chose not to do that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of simulate this strap hinge and it's not even really a good simulation because I can only make it come so far over the elevator so as not to interfere with the elevator movement. So I have about, it's like about uh, 45 degrees, which is really probably more than I need. But anyway, that's, I think it gives good visual interest. It's not really scale, but it does give a nice visual interest there. Um, the, uh, this is supposed to simulate the jam nut. <laughs> At first, I didn't do it. Uh, I've already uh, thin uh, or tacked in these uh, carbon fiber tubes with thin CA into the lugs. But I forgot on these three to add my uh, simulated jam nut. And I'm just using uh, plastic tubes, styrene tube for that. So in order to add these, this was really fiddly. I cut a two millimeter piece of the styrene, and then um, I cut that piece in half, and then glued on one half to the top, and then one half to the bottom. And it kind of works. I mean, I don't think you could really tell if I was if I was not telling you how I did this. A little bit simpler method, putting the uh, simulated jam nuts on before I install the carbon fiber. So it's already been cut to length. Um, to do that, uh, pretty simple. Um, I just take some yellow tape and wrap it around the carbon fiber about the position where it's going to be cut and then cut with a hacksaw and the yellow tape helps to keep it from splintering so much and then I'll take a little bit of thin CA on the end keeping the tape on at the time a little thin CA and then peel the tape off and then I can sand down and that seems to work pretty well And this is also a 1.6 millimeter bolt. It's all longer, it's, I think it's 16 or 18 millimeter long. But it goes all the way through the stab. All right, now I'll tack glue these in and then I will put the simulated jam nuts in place. I don't think, at one time I considered uh, trying to sand a hex shape on the simulated jam nuts but I don't think I'm gonna do that this I think this gives the appearance of a jam nut without actually creating a hex shape and I, I, that's starting to get a little bit too in depth or even though this is pointing downwards the capillary action between the carbon fiber tube and the aluminum pulls the thin CA up into it. That's why you don't see it running down. There's none on my finger. So that's why I like the fit between the carbon fiber tube and the aluminum. I get that capillary action pulling the thin CA up. Now I can glue in my simulated jam nuts. The tail bracing wires, I think I'm going to call complete. They're done. They're not permanently installed yet. I need to remove them for painting. But the only other thing, the only other two things that I, I will do or might do is one, 
I need to grind down the excess of the bolt. It's a little long and it kind of digs in. A couple of these kind of dig into the horizontal stab when you tighten this bolt down. So I might go in and grind those flush with the nut. I also need to grind off my long bolt here flush with the nut as well. And these simulated jam nuts. Well, I keep going back and forth on those. First, I was going to sand them to a hex shape, and then I said, no, nah, I'm not going to fool with it. And now I'm back to sanding them to the hex shape. But if I do it, it's going to be later. I'm hoping if enough time passes, that feeling will just pass as well. So let me flip this upside down so I can show you the bottom. Before I do flip this over, let me show you real quick that even though these were simulated bracing wires, they actually do a fairly decent job of bracing the tail, the fin and the horizontal stab. And there is a little bit of flex in the carbon fiber tube if you push hard enough, but there was definitely more flex in these two or in the empennage without the bracing than with the bracing. So I get a little added benefit there. And the bottom. I was really unsure as to the spacing of these as they attach to the fuselage. I didn't really have any good pictures that, that would let me show that. It, it appeared that the back, the trailing edge, was just kind of straight along the trailing edge. And it also looked like the front one was kind of equidistant from the back. So that's what I did. Uh, I can't really tell if it's scale or not. That's kind of what it looks like. I never could find a straight on picture like this where I could really tell. I also couldn't tell about the fitting to the fuselage. I never could find a good picture that had high enough resolution so I could tell if this fitting, these two fittings are going on the outside of the covering or if they're on the inside and the covering goes over top of it, I just couldn't tell. So I just put them on the outside. Anyway, I think overall, I'm pretty happy with this. It took the better part of two days. It wasn't really hard. It was this really small hardware that was just really difficult to work with. And the view tail on. Hopefully you can get an idea of what this is going to look like, or of what this does look like. So with that, I'm going to call the tail bracing wires complete. That uh, gets me one step closer to paint. And speaking of paint, I did go to the paint store and I picked up some yellow and some blue. And I've done a little bit of testing with it, but I'm going to wait till the painting video to talk about that.